Hello YouTube, welcome to my channel, I'm Sri Tips, and in this video, this is part two of the catalytic converter video, what I'm going to do is I recovered this black mixed platinum group metal powder in uh, part one of the video, and in this video what I'm going to try to do is separate these metals out, and uh, we're going to get right to it. Just as a quick review here in uh, part one of the video, I used a modified chop saw with a metal cutting blade to cut those uh, casings off those catalytic converters and get the substrates out. Once I had all the casings cut open and the substrates removed, I uh, placed the substrate pieces with the platinum uh, metals on them in five gallon buckets. And then I added one gallon each to each bucket of hydrochloric acid 31 percent hydrochloric acid then I added an equal amount of water to form a 50-50 dilute uh, hydrochloric acid solution and I added small amounts maybe 50 ml or so of bleach to form chlorine gas in each of the buckets and it's this chlorine gas that leaches the metals out of the uh, catalytic converter substrates. After several weeks of leaching, I take the solution and uh, pour it through some filters there to filter out any solid particles. And then I uh, get the platinum bearing solution into my fume hood, put it in some beakers, and then I add uh, pieces of zinc metal to cement out the platinum group metals. Here I use a pH test strip to make sure I have all the acid and dissolved zinc rinsed from the PGM metals. Got our nice black powder. What I'll do now is go ahead and put it on some low heat back here. And evaporate it to dryness, real slow. To start this experiment, what I've got here is I've got my beaker with my mixed black PGM metals. Uh, I've got a uh, the weight of the dried metal powder is 20.9 grams, and that's critical because I need to know that weight in order to be able to do this successfully. What I'm going to do is start off by adding about uh, 250 ml of uh, hydrochloric acid here. A magnetic stir bar here this is a magnetic stir with a hot plate and what I'm going to do is go ahead and put my stir bar in and start stirring I've got the solution on stirring now I'm going to go ahead and add some heat and get this thing heated up and then what we'll do is we'll add some 12% uh, hydrogen peroxide uh, until I get all the uh, mixed PGM metals dissolved with the hydrogen peroxide and hydrochloric acid. The solution has been stirring and on the heat now for about uh, 20 minutes. And we got the solution up to 146 Fahrenheit, 63.6 Celsius. Now I'm going to start adding small doses of uh, hydrogen peroxide here with a pipette. It's about 3 ml right there. And another 3 ml. I'm going to just keep adding small doses of uh, hydrogen peroxide here until I get the uh, all the powder to go into solution. about a half hour, 35 minutes or so. 
and we've got the uh, solution up to 191 Fahrenheit, 88.4 Celsius. I'm going to add some more hydrogen peroxide here. got the solution up to the right temperature now. When I add the uh, hydrogen peroxide I get a bubbling reaction as you can see there. The solution's been on now for about an hour. I'm going to go ahead and add some more hydrogen peroxide here just a smidge. And we're still getting a reaction so uh, Looks like we still got some more uh, metals that have to dissolve. Got lucky there. Got to start at it in smaller increments. Seven Fahrenheit, 91.6 Celsius. I'm going to add some more hydrogen peroxide here. the end of the uh, dissolving this stuff because as I put this in I'm noticing that I'm getting less and less of a reaction it still bubbles up but not quite as high as it did earlier so I'm thinking the uh, powders are becoming dissolved now my solution's been on for about two hours now, when I add uh, additional hydrogen peroxide, I get I still get a reaction, but uh, it's not very vigorous. So I'm thinking that uh, most of the metals have probably dissolved by now. We turn off the stir bar, turn off the heat. Lift this up, and see if I can see uh, if there's any metal down in the bottom of there. I don't think I'm going to be able to see anything. Yeah, it doesn't look like there's anything down there. I may have gotten it all dissolved. I'm just going to go ahead and let this cool off now, and uh, we'll filter it and proceed with the uh, with the separation. I've turned the heat off. And uh, I've still got a little bit of bubbling action going on there. Not sure what that is. But I'm going to let this cool down. I think I'm going to put it in, in an ice bath. And just let it cool down so I can run it through a filter. Okay, we've got the temperature at 168 Fahrenheit. 75.6 Celsius. We've got a magnet here. I'm going to go ahead and uh, try to get the stir bar out. Give it an ice bath now to see if I can get it to cool down. Okay, 
Temperatures down to 55.4 centigrade, 141.5 Fahrenheit. The solution has been allowed to cool now in the ice bath. It's down to 19 degrees centigrade, 66.5 Fahrenheit. What I'm going to do now is go ahead and pour it through a filter down here and filter out any solids. see there every bit of the uh, mixed PGM powders went into solution with that hydrochloric acid and hydrogen peroxide. While I'm waiting for the uh, solution to filter, I'm going to go ahead up here and make me a saturated solution of ammonium chloride. That's what we're going to use to precipitate out the platinum from this solution. To make that, I'm going to add about uh, 200 ml of distilled water. And then I'm going to add uh, spoonfuls of ammonium chloride to make a saturated solution. What I mean by saturated is I want, uh, I want the, the ammonium chloride to go into solution to dissolve. But I want a little bit of ammonium chloride left undissolved on the bottom. That means I got a saturated solution. spoons of ammonium chloride in that 200 ml of water there everything dissolves so I'm gonna add some more to make a, make sure I got an excess in there of uh, ammonium chloride I mixed PGM solution is uh, almost completely filtered now Here's something I didn't expect. I got some solids in the uh, filter. Don't know what that is. Didn't expect that. Didn't expect much to be in with that uh, dissolved mixed PGMs, but obviously I got something. So I'm glad I filtered it out. All right, I'm just gonna take a look at the bottom of this flask, make sure I ain't got a bunch of junk on the bottom of the filtrate here. And as you can see there, I don't see a bunch of stuff in there. So I think we're going to be okay with this. I'm not going to, uh, I'm not going to rinse down the filter there. I'm just going to leave that like it is. I don't know what that is. I don't know if I add some hydrochloric acid or even water, if that might dissolve and pass down through the filter and contaminate my solution down here. So I'm just going to leave it like it is. Okay, I started with 20.9 grams of mixed black PGM powder and what I want to end up here with is uh, 1 gram per 20 ml of solution. So I want this to equate out to be about 418 ml of solution. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to transfer this into a uh, beaker so I can get a measurement on it. see any residue on the bottom of my beaker here so I'm pretty sure it's safe to go ahead and rinse it out a little bit not much just a little bit of water to rinse it out okay if 
you look here, you, you'll be able to see that I've got uh, about 400, just over 400 ml of solution here with my uh, black PGM metal dissolved in it. This is the equation I use to determine how much solution I should have. And I'm just about right on. It came out just perfect. I didn't have to add any more or I didn't have to take any more out. So we're ready to go ahead and add the ammonium chloride right now and try to precipitate out the platinum. Okay, I've got the solution at the uh, proper level here, with the right volume of uh, liquid in it. What I'm going to do is I've got my saturated solution of ammonium chloride over here. And uh, as you can see, the it's ice cold. When I mix the ammonium chloride with the uh, water there, it, uh, it's an endothermic reaction that uh, gets real cold. So I'm going to go ahead and just pour this in right now. What I want to do is I want to get an excess amount of ammonium chloride in here to uh, for the next reaction. And there comes the platinum. That's our platinum coming out of solution right there. I'm going to go ahead and add here about uh, 200 ml of this solution because I do need an excess of it in the solution for the next step when we go to get the palladium out. let that settle now okay this is about a four minute segment of video speeded up to eight times when I added that ammonium chloride two things happened the platinum precipitated out and the palladium solution became infused with ammonium chloride for the next step all right our solution has been allowed to settle for about an hour I don't know if you can see that or not but uh, uh, platinum ammonium hexachloroplatinate has settled out to the bottom I've set up a little filter down here what I'm going to do is filter out that the solids which is the platinum and then uh, we'll proceed with uh, recovering the palladium Okay, you can see here, here's our uh, platinum precipitate down in the bottom of the beaker. And what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to use a 15% uh, ammonium chloride solution to rinse it out of the bottom of the beaker. I've got my palladium solution filtered here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this off to the side and I'm going to put the uh, filter into this smaller container here and then what I'm going to do is I've got the platinum down in the bottom of the beaker here and I'm going to use a dilute solution of ammonium chloride to uh, rinse the platinum out of the beaker and down into the funnel and the reason I changed containers here is because uh, I don't want any, this, this platinum salt here is soluble in water and uh, I'm fearful that uh, if I don't do this correctly I may dissolve some of this and put it back in here so that's why I'm uh, using this separate container here to transfer the platinum salt down into my funnel here. The uh, dilute 15% ammonium chloride solution will not dissolve this platinum salt here. Tap water will dissolve it, so tap water can't be used, or distilled water. Plain water will dissolve this salt 
put it back into solution and uh, cause it to commingle with the uh, palladium solution. So that's why I transferred it to this, uh, this container down here. platinum out of our beaker now and it's down in our funnel now I'm gonna rinse the platinum powder with some 15% uh, ammonium chloride water Again, if, uh, if I tried to use distilled water or tap water, uh, this platinum salt will go back into solution and pass through the filter there. And we want to try to avoid that, so I'm using 15% ammonium chloride water to rinse the uh, platinum uh, salt off. Before I rinse uh, my beaker out here, uh, I wanted to explain what I'm doing here. What I've got is the beaker that had the uh, platinum in it, and I'm just rinsing it out with some water here. There's not very much in here at all, as you can see, that the water is almost crystal clear, but I'm going to add this to my, uh, this is my temporary stock pot here, this flask, because I've got my my stock pot settling so that I can uh, do my stock pot video coming up next so this is kind of like my temporary stock pot I just keep my solutions in here until I get my stock pot done and uh, start my new stock pot okay we've got our uh, hexachloroplatinate here or ammonium hexachloroplatinate in our funnel it's about the color of uh, mustard and what I'm going to do now, I've got a, uh, a container here that's from my palladium video where I recovered some uh, platinum from that. And I'm going to add this funnel or this filter with the platinum salt in it to this container. This is going to be uh, platinum salt. It's probably close to about 99% pure. It'll be contaminated with palladium. So what we'll have to do is uh, do a little bit of a further refining on this in another video. But this is our platinum in this container right here. Right over here I've got our palladium solution that we're getting ready to uh, bubble chlorine gas through. Here's the rinse that we took out of the uh, platinum this has had the platinum removed from it with ammonium chloride and uh, the platinum rinse I rinsed the uh, uh, palladium out of the platinum salt it would, I would be tempted to add this back to my main solution but I'm not going to do that instead what I'm going to do is I'm going to add this to my stock pot because I don't want to upset the uh, the concentration here I need it concentrated for this next step so what I'll do is I'm going to add this solution to my stock pot over here and again this is my substitute stock pot because I've got my uh, regular stock pot settling because I'm getting ready to refine it so when I start my new stock pot I'll put this solution that I'm pouring in this flask here into my new stock pot I'd just like to do a little review here. This is my uh, platinum salt that I'm saving for further refining. If I uh, was to burn that right now, it'd make about a 98 to 99 percent pure platinum sponge if I calcine that in a uh, fused quartz dish. I added the rinse from this to my new stock pot. That's this here. This will be added to my new stock pot once I get my other stock pot refined. 
And then here is our palladium solution. And these two are pretty much done now. I'm going to move these out of the way. And what we're going to do now is set up to uh, put this solution and bubble chlorine gas through it to make a uh, palladium salt that is soluble in ammonia. I'm getting ready to do that right now. The next step in the process is to bubble chlorine gas through my palladium solution that's had the platinum removed from it with ammonium chloride. So I'm going to take one half of one of these uh, chlorine tablets here and crush it up in a mortar and pestle. After crushing the chlorine tablets, I add the powder to the gas generator flask, install the, uh, the funnel there, and then charge that funnel with about 200 ml of hydrochloric acid. Then I transfer the uh, solution from the flask into the beaker where we're going to do the reaction. Here I have a piece of glass tubing with a uh, small piece of plastic tubing fit over the end of it. I'm just going to slip that up inside of the uh, end of this tube here, like so. I'm going to fit this end onto the gas generator. And I'm going to put the glass tubing down into my beaker that's got my palladium solution in it. Now I'm going to put some ice down into the uh, container here to keep that solution cool as I bubble the chlorine through it. Now I'm adding some water to uh, keep the uh, coolant uniform around the beaker. All right, the apparatus is set up and ready to go. I'm gonna go ahead and start an acid flow over here onto the uh, onto the chlorine tablets. And what that'll do is that'll create uh, some chlorine gas down in here in my gas generator. And as you can see, it immediately starts bubbling over here. get a quick temperature reading here. Our solution is only 70.5 Fahrenheit, 21.6 centigrade. This is our gas generating apparatus. I've got some hydrochloric acid dripping down into a slurry of uh, swimming pool tablets that have been crushed up. The gas is going out this arm bubbling down through this tube and into our uh, hexachloropalladate solution there and there's a reaction going on that's converting that uh, into a precipitate that I'm going to filter out and then we'll dissolve this in ammonia. Okay, the uh, chlorine's been bubbling through my hexachloropalladate solution there for about five minutes, I'm going to go ahead and shut off the acid flow here and uh, pull the injection tube out and let this settle for a few minutes and see what we got. I allowed the solution to settle here. You can see the uh, precipitate down there. There's a ton of it. Uh, but the solution setting above it is a little bit too dark yet so what I've done is I've uh, I used some uh, ammonium chloride and just ammonium chloride and some distilled water and I made another little bit of saturated solution here I'm gonna go ahead and pour it into this beaker here and see if I can get some more of that uh, blading to come out of solution here Yeah, 
Yeah, see that? More of it's precipitating out. There's got to be an excess of uh, ammonium chloride in this uh, solution in order for this reaction to happen correctly. Now I'll bubble a little bit more chlorine gas through it. Now get over here without getting in the way of the camera. I start the flow of hydrochloric acid down into the gas generator to start generating some more chlorine gas and it takes a few moments for that reaction to happen. That's why we got a delay here, but here it comes. has been bubbling uh, chlorine gas now for about three minutes. I'm going to go ahead and shut off the gas generator again and we'll allow this to settle and uh, see what kind of uh, what color the solution is that's above that precipitate. I want it to be a uh, light yellow color about the straw, uh, the color, you know, straw color about the color of urine is what I'm looking for this is the color I was looking for for the solution above the uh, precipitate. It's kind of a uh, light yellow color. It looks kind of green on the camera there, but it's a light yellow color. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to filter out that precipitate. I'm going to use my 15% ammonium chloride solution to rinse out the uh, remaining palladium salt out of the beaker here. I'm just going to go ahead and cover this up now, protect it from anything getting in there, and let all that solution drain out. And then we'll go to the next step, which is uh, to dissolve this salt in ammonia. Our ammonia-soluble palladium salt has been draining now for about an hour and a half. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it up here. I've got a uh, stir plate up here. Some ammonia. I've got a I got a stir bar in there. I don't know if you can see that twirling around. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and place this ammonia soluble palladium salt in this clean, dry beaker. Like so. Now what I'm going to do is I've got some 10% ammonium hydroxide here from the grocery store. Just regular old, old ammonia that you use to clean your kitchen with. And I'm going to go ahead and start adding this to the, uh, the palladium salt now and see if we can get this to dissolve. Pretty blue color forming in there.
added ammonia to about the 425 ml level. I'm just going to get a quick temperature reading here and see what we got. And we got 32.8 C, 32.8 Celsius, 91 degrees Fahrenheit. It's been stirring with the ammonia. It's up to about the uh, 500 ml level. I want to get a quick temperature reading here. We got uh, 91.5 Fahrenheit, 33.0 Celsius. I've got it up to about the 600 ml level with ammonia. It's been on here stirring for about a half an hour. I'm going to go ahead and turn the stir bar off and let this settle and see what we got here. I've allowed this solution to settle. It's got some probably uh, paper in it from the filter paper and the solution is blue. What I'm going to do now is go ahead and pour it through this filter and uh, get it filtered out. water will do to this so I'm not going to use any water to rinse the beaker out. I'm going to use a little bit of ammonia here. Okay, I've got the solution filtered into this flask. What I'm going to do now is transfer the solution up here to a uh, clean dry beaker. This is our palladium dissolved in ammonia. I've got some hydrochloric acid here in this beaker and now what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to add it to the palladium that's been dissolved in aluminum, reacidify this solution and precipitate out pure palladium salt. a while here to get the uh, ammonia solution to turn from base to uh, acid with this hydrochloric. It's heating up just a little bit. Okay, I can see the yellow precipitate forming. There it goes. I'll keep adding ammonia and we should get some real bright fluffy palladium salt. It's just beautiful. Look at that. It's just I'll never get tired of watching this happen. It's just absolutely beautiful. That's our pure palladium salt there. Alright, that was just the right amount of hydrochloric acid to add. The solution is a little bit warm here. Let me get you a uh, temperature reading on it. Looks like it's 43.8 Celsius, 111 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, I wanted to talk a little bit about the waste here before I go any further. I've got the uh, palladium salt over here ready to uh, be filtered out. But before I go any further, I've got the uh, solution that I filtered out of the uh, out earlier 
from the uh, ammonia, soluble, ammonia soluble brick red palladium salt. This is the filtrate from that. I just wanted to show you with a status test here that this has still got some precious metals in it. I got an orange color there and a little bit of brown, so it's still got some palladium and a little bit of platinum in it. All right, all the uh, residual palladium and platinum salts, I've rinsed everything into this jug out of all my glassware. This is going in here too. I said earlier that this was my uh, temporary stock pot, but actually, and that I was going to add this to my new stock pot, and that is not the case here. <clears throat> this is going to have ammonia in it, so I'm going to treat this separately. What I'll probably do is just cement the metals out with zinc and then uh, process this independent of my stock pot. If I put this in my stock pot, when I go to try to process the stock pot, I'll get big clouds of ammonia coming out, and that's something that I want to try to avoid. So this will all be practiced. This has got precious metals in it, but it's not going to my stock pot. It's going to get processed separately. Here's our bright yellow uh, palladium precipitate that's uh, ready to be filtered out. I'm going to go ahead and pass it through a filter here now. And then we'll, uh, we'll convert this into pure palladium metal. yellow precipitate is not soluble in water so I can use some cold distilled water here to rinse it out of the beaker and to rinse the uh, material the yellow material here in the funnel I'm going to use some distilled water here to uh, to rinse this salt down off the edges. As I said earlier, this salt is not soluble in water, so I can use cold distilled water to rinse this, uh, this precipitate. I'm going to add some more distilled water here to, just to rinse it down real good. I've got here is a fused quartz dish, one for palladium, one for platinum. I'm going to do the palladium first. We're going to go ahead and burn it and uh, convert that uh, bright yellow precipitate into pure palladium metal. Fused quartz dish here. What I'm going to do now is get the uh, palladium salt out of the funnel. Get some out with a spoon here and put it down into the dish. It scoops out like soft ice cream. do is I'll uh, put the dish back here on the hot plate. I'm going to turn this on super low heat and try to evaporate some of that moisture off without spattering the palladium salt all over the place. It's 
20 degrees Fahrenheit on the dish there, 48.8 centigrade. All right, what I'm going to do is just slowly let this thing evaporate off any moisture that's in there. And then once it gets uh, to start cracking apart and all the moisture's gone and it's dried out real good, I'll turn the heat up and we'll start uh, burning off the uh, ammonium chloride to uh, get our pure palladium sponge. I had the uh, palladium salt and the fused quartz dish on there now for about a half an hour and uh, the moisture is starting to come off of it. You can see uh, the salt itself is 117 Fahrenheit, 47.4. Celsius and that dish is about 147 degrees Fahrenheit, 64 degrees Celsius. So we got this thing uh, evaporating off the moisture real slow here. As soon as all the moisture is gone and that thing starts cracking apart there. I'll know it's time to go ahead and turn the heat up and we can start burning the powder off. The palladium has been on the heat now for about two hours. It's going painfully slow, but that's uh, how it has to be here because I've got to get all the moisture out of there before I can uh, turn the heat up. The heat on the uh, palladium is uh, 147 Fahrenheit there. 63.8 Celsius. The temperature of the dish there. About 116 Celsius. 242 Fahrenheit. Uh, that's just the way this is. If I crank the heat too high, I'll start spattering the palladium out of there because it's still got some moisture in it. Uh, later on, when I go at it, some uh, adding some higher heat to get it to uh, burn off the ammonium chloride powder. If I turn the heat up too high, this material here will melt. And when it melts, it starts uh, vaporizing and volatizing off. And the uh, palladium metal will actually go up the uh, stack. We'll lose metal if I start melting that salt and uh, boiling it off. So I gotta go real slow here to just turn it to a uh, fine gray powder, which is the uh, pure palladium metal. I'm getting ready to lose my battery, so I wanted to get a uh, quick temperature check here. The uh, palladium is uh, 321 Fahrenheit, 160 degrees C. All right, we're about uh, 40 minutes into the uh, process here. I've cranked the heat up to uh, as high as it'll go and now uh, we're starting to burn off the ammonium chloride now to get to the uh, palladium metal. We're at uh, 294 degrees C on the, on the uh, palladium salt and I think the ideal temperature for calcining this is 300 degrees centigrade so we're right there. about an hour into the calcining process and you can see I've got some gray, uh, gray colored metal there and I got to keep doing this until I get the whole dish looking that color. That gray powder is our pure palladium sponge.
palladium's been on that heat now full blast for about an hour and a half. And I still got some tiny bits of yellow on the peaks of some of those uh, clumps of metal down there. Most of it's been calcined. It's gray colored, which is what we want to see. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold this uh, nozzle back about uh, 10 inches from the plate and uh, hit it with a little bit of flamage there. Try to help the rest of this process along. The uh, hot plate just doesn't quite get hot enough to transmit enough heat up to the top of that uh, sponge to complete the process. Okay, I'm going to turn the heat off now and we're going to let our, uh, our palladium sponge cool down and then I'm going to get it out of that fused quartz dish, put it in a melt dish and melt it up into a button. Alright, I wanted to do a quick review here of the entire two-part series of the catalytic converter videos. Outside I've got the two leaching buckets that still have uh, uh, some platinum group metals leach solutions in them and I'll uh, continue to process those. This is our bucket with our uh, waste in it from the uh, the leaching liquid that came out of those five gallon buckets outdoors. I've got uh, there's probably going to be some uh, platinum group metals on the bottom of this bucket. What I'll do is I'll siphon off this material straight to a waste bucket and treat it for waste and then get that uh, black powder off the bottom of that and save it for processing later. Back here I've got all the solutions including anything that was solid uh, rinsed off into a uh, single flask and what I'll do is I'll process that separately. Uh, here's my filtered solution from the ammonia soluble, soluble uh, palladium salt and I'll save that. It looks like it might have some rhodium in it I guess. I don't know what that paint color is. We'll see when I uh, go to process that later on. Up here I've got uh, some more palladium salt that needs to be burned, calcine. It's probably an amount that's at least equal to the amount that I have in that uh, fused quartz dish there. So I just double how much my yield is here. I should be able to get a total yield for both platinums. Keep in mind I, add, I added about 5 grams of palladium that was sitting on my shelf to this, uh, to this video. Here's my platinum. This platinum is not, it's, I could burn this right now in a calcining dish, but it's heavily contaminated with uh, palladium. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to save this. There's probably uh, about two grams of platinum there from the catalytic converters, not very much. But I'm just going to save this until I, uh, until I do a platinum refining video later on. And what I'll probably end up doing is trying to do a hydrolysis with this, which is uh, where you put everything in solution then add some sodium bromate. The sodium bromate combines with all the other metals to form hydroxides. The platinum, not forming a hydroxide, will stay on top of those other hydroxides and then you just draw that off. It's real pure platinum solution. We'll make another video on that. And so that's a uh, quick uh, summary of everything we've done so far in this two-part series. Okay, our uh, palladium sponge has cooled down now. I'm going to transfer it. It's real light and fluffy. So I'm going to transfer it here into a, uh, a crucible. We're going to try to melt it up into a button. Now I'm going to transfer it over here to my uh, my melt table. I'm going to put a liberal liberal amount of borax on it to keep it into the dish when I hit it with the flame. 
And then we're going to go ahead and melt this up. Okay, my torch tip was fouled, and uh, I couldn't get a hot enough flame to get that thing melted. So what I had to do is turn the torch off, turn everything off. I had to take the torch apart, clean it out, so I can get a good flame. And then uh, we'll get this melted up into a button. I got the torch tip all cleaned up. Uh, I'll go ahead and melt that button up now. Okay, here's our nice, bright, shiny mirror finish piece of pure palladium. I'll put it on the scale now, see what it weighs. It's like about six grams of uh, pure palladium. Well, 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 thankfully. Catalytic converter videos are done. Uh, what I was able to recover out of those, uh, those catalytic converters that I leached, I've got some platinum here. It's in salt form. I didn't burn this off yet because it's contaminated with palladium. <clears throat> it's going to need some uh, further refining. So that's going to have to be uh, held for another video. There's probably a couple grams of platinum metal in here. And I'll uh, have to do another video on how to refine that. And I got six grams of pure palladium. It's a nice looking palladium button there. Real bright and shiny. Uh, I've probably got this same exact amount out there in my fume hood still. That's in the salt form that I'll need to burn. And then I'll produce probably another button about this same exact size here. So the yield approximately, not you know, not conclusively, but approximately is going to be about 12 grams of palladium out of those catalytic converters with about 2 grams of uh, platinum. So what I'll do is I'll probably list this on my eBay store. My eBay username is Baphelous, B-A-F-E-L-O-U-S, and I'll list this on my eBay store. Plus I have a lot of other jewelry items listed on my eBay store if you want to take a look at that. Some nice stuff for about the third of retail price. And I clean it up nice. I work at a jewelry store so I clean that stuff up nice, make it look brand new. I check everything out. Make sure there's no worn prongs or uh, loose stones or anything like that. So again, my username on eBay is Baffless. B-A-F-E-L-O-U-S if you go in there and take a look at some of the stuff I have for sale and pick something up, it'll help me pay for the, uh, for the cost of doing these videos. And that would be greatly appreciated.
Thanks to all my subscribers. I'm coming up on 40,000 subscribers here. And, uh, well, this will conclude part two of two of the Catalytic Converter refining videos. Thanks for watching.